You gotta have your A game and ready to go. All right, coach, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I heard you. Okay. Just so everybody on online, we'll uh, we'll probably go ahead and open up with a uh, kind of a setting or opening statement from coach, and then we'll open up for questions after that. So. We have another minute or two, Coach, unless you're ready to roll, then maybe we'll go ahead and get started a few minutes early. No worries. Um, first, I was informed, obviously, that uh, Bob Osmussen is going through a little bit of a, uh, a time right now, so just want to think about him and uh, send prayers and good thoughts his way. Um, and then also uh, today, uh, my baby girl, Brexley, um, is turning two today. We were uh, at one point thought we were going to have a St. Patty's girl, but we uh, missed it by about an hour and 10 minutes. She was born at 1 10 a.m. So we missed uh, a St. Patty's girl, but uh, very happy uh, for her. I didn't get to see her, but I saw her on FaceTime and uh, get to see her in a week when they move out here. So excited for that. Um, other than that, really just um, we're in week eight, obviously, of this whole process uh, with our players uh, coming in and reporting uh, back in January to where we are today. We kind of laid out a plan to them where we wanted to be and where we're going to go. So this is the final week. We've kind of had a combination this week of, of both um, continuing our conditioning, but also kind of a testing and an evaluation to some of the tests that they did before they actually came into our building here that uh, Tank and his crew did with them uh, that first week that they reported during the three days of uh, quarantine. Um, so we're kind of showing them how they've progressed over the last eight weeks. Uh, next week, obviously, we'll jump into spring ball. Our, our layout is this. We'll practice every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we'll have a, a, a time where we can uh, review the film from yesterday and also, you know, continue their physical development with tank and recovery, really trying to reset their minds on the process that you need to get better at, right? We don't have game weeks necessarily in the spring, but we will kind of culminate, uh, uh, culminate on Saturdays with that probably being our heaviest work day. Uh, this week, the first two practices, Tuesday and Thursday, will be in helmets only. Uh, on Saturday, that'll be uh, our first full padded practice. Um, won't necessarily have a scrimmage, but we'll definitely get after it. Be the most physical thing they've done at that point, and then it's really how their bodies respond. Um, I thought Tank and his staff had been very insightful about the workload, stress load these guys could handle. We pushed them pretty hard in week six. Uh, in week six, we began to have some guys uh, flare up with some soft tissue issues, so we backed off them a little bit. Tried to be smart on what we we're doing, uh, made it creative for them, and tried to push them. And then uh, had a really tough Saturday and a competition Saturday where they went against an offensive and defensive player, went head to head, mixed the specialist in there. And it was the hardest work day. And then none of them even were, were even thinking about the workload. They were thinking about the competition, which is exactly where you want them to be. So a lot of great insight going into them. Um, they're getting around our coaches more and more on a daily basis. The, the way the NCAA laid it out two weeks ago, they gave us an extra two hours of meeting time with them that we've been able to uh, capitalize. And I know our guys are really anxious. They're literally you can just see them feeding off the energy of what we're we're trying to provide for them. So I think when you get to talk to them this week, uh, you'll probably hear that. So uh, to help your guys' job make make this uh, uh, more easy for everybody, the last thing I want to do is ever put anybody's job, uh, uh, make it more difficult than it needs to be, including me as a head coach. So um, during this spring phase here, you'll actually have uh, media access to, uh, to either me, my coaches, or our players six days out of the week. All right, we'll take Sunday off. We'll I'll take a breather so we don't have to see each other every day of the week, give the Lord a day off. Um, but I think you'll enjoy that. We'll basically allow a segment of practice where you'll get anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour of time where you can watch us. Um, uh, you know, the advantage we have right now over the rest of this schedule that we have in front of us is next fall's opponent has never seen the University of Illinois with his staff practice or play. And I think we have to keep that in mind as we allow access. And even when we go to the game on Monday, uh, uh, April 19th, we got to keep that in mind a little bit. So we'll we'll address that as that goes, but I want to be able to give you guys access. And obviously, one of the main reasons to go Monday night football for me was uh, to promote the block eye, to get our word out there, to let people see our brand at a time slot that we really wouldn't be competing with any other teams. Um, it, it'll, it'll be a game that'll be based a lot on uh, what our health is, what our numbers are, but I want to make it a competitive game and and make it, uh, make it real for everybody involved. Um, and then we'll take a couple of days after that to review the game, uh, teach our guys how we want to move forward after a game is completed. But then 
will end up really uh, at the end of the our last practice of the spring in theory right now would be kind of a in in week game week Wednesday type practice for opponents. Uh, we'll game plan that last week. We'll lay out how we do our uh, uh, you know scouting reports, how we do game plan. We'll give our coaches access to our players to show them how they'll approach a practice uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, to get us ready for a Saturday game plan. So that's kind of where we're at. A um, lot of a uh, lot of a lot of things up in the air about. Uh, you know, the whole COVID process we're going through right now from recruiting to really even scheduling of when our guys will be able to come and join us uh, in the summer. We would definitely want to give them a few weeks to get home with their with their families. It's been a very unusual year, not just the last six months, but really the last year and a half for these guys. So it's something that we want to respect and give that. Uh, and then just a final shout out and then I'll open up for questions. I see uh, Kent with a bracket behind him. All right. So I'm sure everybody's got theirs filled out. I cannot by NCAA rules. So I haven't filled one out even for fun. Um, my wife and I compete for for uh, 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 gra uh, uh, garbage uh, uh, takeout. That's about our only thing we wager. Um, uh, so we, we we will fill out our brackets. But other than that, um, wish Brad and his crew the best of luck. They're fun to watch. But everybody, it's like it's been awesome for me now to be here a couple months and get around. And you know, I met Mike Small, right? I just seen this guy on Zoom and uh, have been able to be around him and see what he's doing. To see Janet and the women's soccer and like all the different sports, just to be around these people, it's it's pretty awesome um, athletic department that Josh uh, has uh, has put together and, and maintained from the people that were here before him and the success that's at all these different programs and spring sports. It's it's really a fun time to be here. I can't wait to be back to being full normal. So uh, with that, I'll open it up for uh, easy questions. Jeremy, we'll, we'll go ahead and let you uh, lead off and then we'll let folks follow in on the on the chat as you signed up. So go ahead, Jeremy. Good morning, Brett. Uh, you've had about two months or so on campus here to kind of evaluate your roster now in person. Uh, what's involved in that for you and your staff? And, and what have you learned uh, about your roster that you inherited? You know, great, great question, Jeremy. Like the first time we really um, saw him was in a pure observation role. I wanted to give Tank, I wanted to jump in and work with him right away. But Tank, after getting the evaluation to back where they were, we had some deficiencies by position that we really wanted to make sure some mobility, flexibility that we wanted to to make sure we could work for four weeks before we started putting our hands on them. So I would literally just sit up here um, for the use of the bit in the indoor. Uh, I call this my little zoom room here where I'm at. Um, but I can literally overlook the field and, and watch the guys work out. Uh, they kind of know I'm there, but I'm not there. I'm not there looking at it because they kind of get freaked out when, when we start watching them, you know, we just want to let them get to know us a little bit. Um, you know, I think the athletic uh, uh, composition of our roster is impressive. Um, uh, a lot of things I saw film and to be quite honest, you know, when I first got here, I just started recruiting these super seniors and 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 looking at what they had done on film and and uh, really, you know, now with Jake back, brought back all those guys except for the four that worked out here the other day, who did a very nice job as well. You can see they're talented. So um, I've been pleased. Um, I've been also, uh, um, you know, I have concerns in my head about certain positions, but I'm also probably on the more upside or positive at some positions I didn't know about. Um, so it, it's uh, still an evaluation process, but we have put our hands on it. We've worked with them. We've seen how they responded. I like the way they've competed. Um, they definitely have grown uh, in every aspect that we've asked them to do, but we're just, we're nowhere close where we need to be, uh, but we're on that path. So how much does, you know, watching them in tanks, workouts or whatever you can do now compared to spring ball, like how much more evaluation can you do in, in spring ball? Well, you know, the biggest thing is we can't put a little brown ball out there yet. We haven't been able to be around them when they've actually had a football in any way, shape, or form. Like, there's certain drills that we can do with bags and cones, but you can't hit a sled. You can't use simulated uh, 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 drills that, that are, are very football specific. So until you really get out there on the football field, you know, there's, you know, different different phrases out there. But, you know, a lot of times guys look good in drills, but maybe they don't do, do great in skills, you know. Um, so, like, there's a, a lot of carryover. Believe me, next Tuesday will be a little bit of indication. Thursday will be a little bit better. Uh, but then Saturday, when we put the pads on, that's when uh, that's when the separation usually occurs. Thanks, Brett. Yep. Good morning, Coach. You've spoke a lot about like the family aspect that you're trying to build and the tough, smart, dependable football players that your culture has been built on. How much of the foundation of that is built in this first spring football that you're going to have in a couple of weeks here? I think it'll be paramount, Alec. I, I really do. Um, but I like the way they've responded. We do these little football one-on-one -on -one classes where I teach and they listen. Um, we usually do them about 15 minutes uh, twice a week. And 
we go everything. The first thing I talked about was first down, what that meant. And I talked about second down Then I moved to third down. Um, then I, I, I talked about how those different downs are affected by where you are on the field, whether you're in the normal area of the field, whether you're in the shot to fringe, or whether you cross the 50 or you're in the red area. And I've really, that's what I really enjoyed the response from them. Um, uh, once we got the building opened up and they could come in and see us, uh, I would make individual cut up tapes for, for D linemen, O linemen, um, skill players, and really look at their films of the past. Maybe I'll compare them to an NFL type player. This is, you know, they, they all think, you know, every edge rusher thinks he's Lawrence Taylor or, or, you know, everybody uh, thinks they're the greatest player at their position ever. And I try to show them guys that they might be similar to or body type wise. And, and if they could get to that level, that would be a great thing. So the one-on-ones, but also the group settings when we're in our team room have just been, just been awesome. Um, I went through one uh, on Tuesday. I did a uh, end of half, end of game scenario uh, with two divisional opponents for us. And when I was going through it, I was just, you know, firing questions at them and they were unbelievable responses, really, really engaged with it, um, having some fun with it. Um, so it, it's been a, it's been a, a nice growth for us, but obviously we really won't know until we get into spring ball. And then if you had a chance to kind of, I guess, talk to your players about the differences that they might've seen in the workouts that you've done, obviously, like you said, there's no football, but it's all just little drills and how much different it could be in spring ball here coming up. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think the contrast uh, from what they had been exposed to to what they're getting exposed to in a weight room was was pretty dramatic early. Um, I think if you once you start to talk to them, they'll be able to give you that uh, feedback. I don't want to speak on their behalf. One of the things we have when dealing with the media is you speak for yourself and not for others. So uh, I'm excited to see what they say. You know, um, I, I, I saw uh, I read an article uh, earlier this week on uh, Bedarian Low, and and um, one of the things I think you realize when you're a coach is when you're when your your quote unquote more authoritative players or the guys that speak for the team or guys that have a voice in the locker room begin to regurgitate what you say, uh, it means a lot. And and uh, to see Vidarian have an unbelievable article about what kind of person he is, the things I've been able to witness with him and and see with him, uh, and then one of his last comments in that article was he was going to keep stacking days. And I just I just like had a huge flash in my mind um, that that we are reaching each other and 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 building a trust and a relationship there. So. Um, I think they see it as a positive. I think we really tried to show them why we do things, not just, hey, go do this. This is why we do this. And the results can be this. Um, and, you know, you tend to pop, you know, everybody always wants to point out the negative. I try to point out the positives. Um, on Saturday, uh, we had a little, uh, little, little uh, coming to Jesus moment. We had someone not show up Friday night <laughs> on time. And, and we, we went to a meeting on Saturday and, and, you know, I, I got after him a little bit and then uh, we, we gave him a certain reward. And part of that, I also read off uh, four or five um, comments that were from their professors, the people that they've been working with in these academic course loads. And, and there were very glowing comments about people maybe they didn't necessarily think we're going to have them said about them. And, and remarkably, then over the last three or four days, people, the players have been asking me, well, why aren't you saying this about, I only had four to go off of, right? Uh, I'd like to say all the positive ones out there, but it goes to show you once again, positive reinforcement can come back tenfold, just like uh, any other type of negative reinforcement. Thank you, coach. Yep. Hey coach, um, high school football starts this week in the state. I know you guys have been really active with your outreach. I saw the little video that you guys had put out on social media. Um, do you amp up that outreach now that you guys are kind of getting on the field and, you know, having that spring game um, on Big Ten Network? Yeah, Marley, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we, we made the effort uh, to, to reach out to every high school coach in the state, uh, um, and that was an overwhelmingly positive response uh, and really has led the inroads to even some players that we didn't have our radar for 2023, 2024 in one instance, um, uh, and really just general outreach to the community. I did a, a Zoom call with the CPS, Chicago Public Schools, um, Myself and a couple of my coaches got on there and did that with over 70 coaches in that area, uh, expressed to them, hey, we're not only looking for good football players, if you really follow us, we sent out a tweet this past week, we're looking for some student video workers. Um, so we're really not just reaching the high school student athletes, uh, but people that could be involved in our program. And then, yeah, we uh, definitely have made uh, a lot of contact with uh, the players in the state here, wishing them good luck. Um, you know, I'm sure you'll find this out, but there's actually been a couple of games already that have been postponed because of some 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 unfortunate outbreaks uh, in, in you got to be it's a great reminder to our guys I said it to them last night uh, 
we got to pay attention to the world going around us. Um, so I, I'm just generally excited, but I tell you what, as a head coach in the, in the state of Illinois, right, at the University of Illinois and the, and, the, and the flagship of our state, we have to be able to take advantage of this time, right? We got to be able to take advantage of, you know, the, the they're playing six, hopefully, you know, games that we can take a kid that maybe he was 180 pound underdeveloped sophomore. Now he's a 225 pound junior, you know, and he's changed dramatic aura, uh, uh, a 260 pound guy that's now 240 pounds and is turned into a different athlete, you know? So we, uh, to me, it's a benefit for us. I mean, obviously we didn't get the fall, but I wasn't here. So it really doesn't matter. So now we got a chance to evaluate our whole state and, and there'll be a couple of guys uh, that, that come out of the, out of the, uh, out of the woodworks. You know, we actually just signed a guy. I'm sure you guys all followed on Twitter, you know, that, that was a late addition. We saw his film, saw where he was. We think he's a player that can play for us and, and the, re the rest will be written. And you also mentioned um, the basketball team briefly. Now that you've been in the, the community a little bit, I, I can imagine you've seen just kind of the excitement and, and the hype that um, has been surrounding that program. I mean, does that kind of just get you excited for the season and spring ball and like, okay, this basketball team is having an incredible run. Like now it's our turn and just seeing what kind of hype it brings into the community. Yeah, I, remember, I distinctly remember um, when I was first here with Josh, he was kind of, Give me a tour around campus and I was remembering the, as we were riding there we were you know coming up on on State Farm and we, we'd like he made a comment to me and he's just kind of talking he goes it's too bad that a lot of different reasons that we're in this you know pandemic and the in the all the rules are around COVID he goes because this this place would be rocking right now like it's never been rocking um in 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 this modern era so like it 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 said something to me then and then as I began to watch this thing unfold and I see on social media the way our students reacted on Sunday you know when they won the Big Ten Kearney Tourney, uh, tournament uh, title. Um, I've actually talked to Brad a number of times, but really only seen him face to face a couple of times, once when I was in the arena, and then we went to say goodbye to him when they were heading to Indy uh, on that send off over there. And yeah, you're excited. I think there's correlations like, you know, I don't know Isle very well, um, just watch him play and perform, but I know his story about playing for his home state and how important that was. And maybe he can set a legacy of Illinois basketball for a long time. That's what we need from someone in our state right now in football. Um, that's part of that reason we did that video, right? So like, um, plus I had those monster six pack abs coming out of that 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 sheet of paper and it was uh, uh, the beginning of a game. So uh, that was fun, but it's it, it just, there's a great feeling around where we're at. I just had another Zoom last night with a, with a large group of uh, uh, former football players from all over the country. Uh, we were on the Zoom last night for about an hour. My whole staff introduced themselves to them and uh, there were high school coaches there were former players that were on that Zoom call and they got to ask us questions and just a really good feel for right now. But, uh, you know, I, I get it too. We haven't lost a game. We're undefeated, so everybody's happy. But uh, we're going to kind of keep riding this as long as we can. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brett, hope all is well. Uh, is there a direct correlation between having a successful spring to a successful season or is it more just really important but not a, not a must? Um. I would say they're all core. Yeah, there's definitely a, a correlation and carryover. But, you know, I'm going to tell these guys up front, like we have a we have a, a big meeting tomorrow night, Friday night. Uh, Saturday, we'll actually come in and we're actually uh, going to go and I'm going to take these guys and we're going to I'll put up on the big screen and show them how we're how we've scheduled that first practice, where we're at, the times allotted, where we're supposed to be. And then we're going to go out on the field and we're not going to do anything except for walk the practice field. And I'm going to show them where they're going to flex where they're going to uh, stretch, where they're going to work with their linebackers, where they're going to work with the inside linebackers, where they're going to work with the wide receivers, where we're going to do Skelly, where we're going to do team. Because when we got that two hours out there together, it needs to be it needs to be just smooth, humming. And for us to be working together the first time, for us to have success in the fall, we just got to keep, you know, start the right way, get better on Thursday, get better on Saturday, get better in these 15 practices, hit the summer. They get eight weeks with, with Tank and his staff to get, get their mind right, get their body right, and then we'll go into fall camp and see where we can go. So I tell you what, in the spring, you get a lot of – when you're established and when you, you uh, are, are, are kind of understanding the expectations, it's fun to see new guys emerge, you know. Um, these super seniors, obviously, it's their back. They've played a lot of football, but they haven't played a lot of football for us uh, or with us as coaches here. So it's going to be interesting to see who, those who go forward, maybe those who plateau. Um, Guys that are coming back off injury, guys that look different, play different. We'll have a few positional changes, um, uh, I'm sure, before we uh, get done with spring ball. So it's all going to be hopefully moving forward. 
And then uh, my second one is you're a coach that has said multiple times you, you want to get to know your guys on a personal level. How has that gone so far? I know you touched on uh, Mr. Lowe, but, but how has that gone so far for you in the first eight weeks? Well, you know, it's probably um, the only um, disadvantage is, is these masks, right? Like I could take them off now. I'm the only one in here, but um, when we're out on, you know, when you're walking around the building and they're in our meetings, I'm looking out to a team room, you know, with a hundred, hundred plus guys and they're all wearing masks and a lot of them got hats, you know? So like, it's just hard to get to know them, their faces. So um, once we put the jerseys on them and I could see them out there working out without headgear on, that has really just helped me get to know them. And then now, you know, the ones you want to jab a little bit here, you know, like, uh, you know, Barker's always a good target to jab him up a little bit. Uh, you know, anybody that you can realize you want to, you know, I'm trying to get Brandon Peters to, you know, whatever we got to do, recite poetry or read poems to get him to speak more, you know, like whatever we have to do to make these guys communicate. And I tell you what, we had a, little team bonding event uh, last week. And I saw these guys interact and communicate with each other. It was really a positive thing for me as coach, just to see the talking in the building and, and moving on. And then, you know, when, when, when guys are competing, you see them cheer for one another, ball, cross over on both sides of the ball. They get to know our coaches. We've had parent Zoom calls. We've had Zoom calls with, you know, with, with positional groups. Um, you know, Jake Hansen, when he decided to come back, Jake started joining us through Zoom. He literally just, I literally sat down with him yesterday for the first time in my life face to face. You know, I've talked to him numerous times on the phone, but when he got here Sunday night, I guess it was, he had to go through three days of quarantine before he could come in the building. So it's just all these layers. We're doing as good as we can. Um, it'll be a lot better over these next five weeks, but uh, it's a process and, and I'm enjoying it. And I think they really are as well. Thanks, Brett. Yep. Hey, Brett, when spring ball is over, what are the specific things that you're going to look at as markers of success? Is it how comfortable you as a coaching staff are with the guys, vice versa? What are some of those things you're looking for? I think it's going to be how, you know, three key things are always right. Or how do we are, how are we communicating? How are we going from player to coach, coach to player, and then out on the field, how are player to player communications going? Um, have they improved every day, right? Are we going through can we go through two weeks of steady growth and then they have to fall back for a day? Can we keep pushing the envelope? Um, I think that's part of it, you know, like the growth of, of just everything we do. Um, and then third one, the biggest one is if they, they now can begin to trust you without knowing where they're going, right? The greatest sign a coach can be is he can take a player to a new level that he's never been to before without him even knowing it. Like if you can get them to all of a sudden get to a point where they're like, holy, I just did that. Like I, I just, I just did. And he didn't even know he was doing it. Um, that's when you truly reached your goals, you know, as uh, uh, I hit these guys up early on, you know, I just want three things every day, do the right thing, be respectful of others and, and, and be the best you. If we can do that every day, um, we're going to have a really good chance to get where we want to be. But uh, I like the early returns, but at the end of spring ball, to be honest, uh, Joey will sit down. Uh, I've met with a lot of our players, but I've never sat down individually with each guy on the team. And that's something I'll do because when they are done with spring ball, they got about a three week window here on campus before they hit finals and go home. So I'll meet with them every, every one of them individually on academics, athletics, and social being, and then just have a couple, you know, uh, obviously ongoing discussions with each one of them. Uh, they'll have a sign out or a check out with their positional coach, you know, to make sure all the details of where they're going to be, how, who they're going to be living with, who they're going to be around, what their, what their uh, 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 contact info will be. It's something that'll be a little bit new to them, but it's just a way to kind of wrap up the spring and set the tone for where we want to be in the fall. So that'll, that'll be a big part of it as well. And then for you personally, it's been a couple of years since you've laid out a spring practice and got this thing back into motion. What, what has this been like for you and kind of getting back in and laying out your plans? Well, it's been, been awesome for me because I think one of the greatest things you can do is listen, right? Um, I don't have all the answers, uh, but I definitely enjoy listening through people, not only the the 10 coaches I hired, but also the four GAs and all the other people I brought in around the program. We all steal from people, right, that have success. And one of the great things about being in the NFL the last three years is I've been able to go around the country and gauge other programs and what they're doing. You know, I went to coaches that were involved in spring ball that I used to compete against, and all of a sudden I'm in their facilities, you know, working out their players and seeing how they do things. Um, one of the big changes for me is, you know, before I got here, they had transitioned to spring morning practices, you know, and, and that was totally new to me. It was something that I was intrigued with when I was at my previous two spots, but I never transitioned to do that. I would bet you in college football, as much as 60 or maybe even close to 70% of people practice in the morning. So 
Uh, I really uh, did a lot of research on that with coaches that have used that, been around it, and, and I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, so, you know, but just little things like you're saying, you know, we got an indoor practice facility, we got a grass field, and we got a, a stadium. On, I, I want to figure out the best one for us to get the best results in practicing uh, safety for our players, but also uh, uh, consistency for our players and coaches. So it's all a learning experience, but it's something that I love getting back into. Uh, I, I do like uh, being a head coach and being in the front of the room and gathering these meetings. We meet with our coaches basically every day. Yesterday we had a 14-person department head meeting where we talk about everything in the building from the parking lot to the showers to, to, to the uh, parking uh, uh, exit, you know. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. Uh, maybe the others aren't enjoying as much as me, but I've definitely enjoyed every minute of it. Thanks, Brett. Yep. Hey, Brett. Good to see you, and uh, thanks for what you said about Bob. That's appreciated over here. Um, just to, to lead off, um, Illinois hasn't had a ton of traditional spring games in the last six, seven years or so. I mean, beyond just the, the effect of getting to see these guys in action, uh, why is it so important to bring a traditional spring game to make sure you have a traditional spring game in your first year here at Illinois just for this team and this community? Well, I think at that point, we should have a pretty good understanding of, you know, of the players on the roster that we have right now. We'll add some more players over the summer, but you should have a pretty good grasp of what your you know two best players are at your position. The two deep should be pretty clean to you. And we'll have a, a, a blue orange game that will basically, you know, feature our best guys that we think playing against everybody else. And um, we'll, we'll set it up to try and let those guys. But I do think the five offensive linemen, if we think that a certain group of five guys or six, maybe seven, the more they play together and communicate and talk together in the same uh, um, uh, game or in that environment, they'll play that way better next fall. Um, and I do want to put our guys, you know, um, in a position to have a little bit of adversity. Um, I might, you know, all of a sudden call sudden change out, put the ball on the eight yard line. If it doesn't happen in the first half, I might make it happen in the second half. I want to see these guys respond to adversity. Um, and then I do, I do think for me as a, a, a head coach, I want to see how my coaches handle a game day environment. So we'll be on headsets that day. Uh, we'll be able to, you know, be able to translate and communicate. We can't get enough positive reps on that. Uh, you know, as much of an advantage it is that no one's seen us play, it's a, a disadvantage to us that we've never worked together in a, in, in a full full game environment. So we'll do it there. We'll probably do it one other time uh, in the spring. And then in the fall, I'd like to do it as many as two to three other times before we play Nebraska, just so we can handle those moments better. And then uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought you said back in week six or so leading up to this point, uh, you had the guys go kind of a one-on-one -on -one offensive player versus a, a defensive player. Why, why did you so decide at that time that was the, the thing you wanted to, to do to see out of those guys? What uh, can, you, can you take us into a little bit more of the, the benefits you see in doing that at that particular time? Yeah, so we, we had laid out eight weeks, right? And, and to keep a young man's attention and make him continue to grow for eight weeks is a challenge, right? Um, I think that to keep things new and fresh. So we hit that five week mark and I, and I knew Tang knew exactly where I was going with it. I'm like, I think we need to throw some, some competitive nature in there. Like, so competition brings the best of everyone, right? I mean, you guys compete each other on a, on, on an individual basis with your, with your coverage and your, your product. Uh, players are doing the same thing. I'm doing the same thing. So I wanted to make them compete. So we showed them the drills that they were going to do and they did it within their respective side. Offense came in at one time, defense came in at one time with a specialist, and then we threw the curveball at him. I brought him upstairs on Friday night, um, and uh, I announced the pairings on Friday night. So one of them was Isaiah versus Tony Adams, right? So take a quarterback versus wide receiver who's got good athletic ability. I put Owen Carney up against Medarian Lowe. Um, I put Gerasati uh, uh, against uh, um, Calvin Avery, right? So had guys at every position that were kind of competing and right away, people probably automatically thought, oh, this guy's going to get this guy. This guy's going to get this guy. I put Deuce Span up against a specialist. Um, uh, so, like, it was fun because as they reacted, I knew exactly where they thought they were going. And then we competed the next morning at, at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. And then um, we gave them an hour break, fed them, and we brought them upstairs. And then we showed the results. And we made them stand up. And the winner was recognized and the loser was criticized, right? So, there's a, you build that brand of you compete every day. And uh, because it was crossover, it was cool too, to see them react one another. And uh, I just think competition breeds that in you and the more competitive nature uh, we can be, the better we'll be. And to my point, Colin, I said earlier on that day when we met at competitive, that was the hardest work day to this point. 
and I would say universally, those guys handled that, the reaction to the competition and the actual workload better than they had at any other point. Like, you know, some of those guys go to trash cans, like they're drinking, they're thinking they're, they're water and they're not, they're not drinking for water, believe me. Um, so like, I think it's important um, that day we had very little uh, of that. And it was just because they were concentrating on the competition, which is what you're looking for on Saturdays. Thank you, Brett. Yep. Hi, Coach. Um, how much how much time are you going to be able to spend in the spring um, installing uh, the new schemes? I know you're going to play completely different schemes than, than what Lovey Smith did. Uh, and, and how does that process kind of work starting from, from the ground up? Good question, Doug. I, I think, first off, anything that we can carry over from Lovey, like it's it's much easier for us to learn versus the players, right? This is what we're here for. We, there's no limit on our hours. A lot of my guys are in the building before 5 a.m. and they're not out of the building until we're done with our last Zoom at, at 8.30, 9.30 at night, all right? So th there's no limit on our hours. There are limit on player hours. Um, we can't make them learn um, beyond the 20 hours that we have unless it's on their own, So um, or the 10 hours that we're in right now. So if we can carry something forward, we try to do that. Um, but on the same account, we had to put in our terminology so that we can get, but a, but a post route is a post route, you know? So like TP, when I was talking with Tony, we try to do as much of that as we can, but um, schematically, absolutely. We'll spend every day. We've already done that really the last four weeks. We've been uh, installing little pieces at a time, uh, situational awareness as well. Like I work with as a head coach, I teach them what an end of half situation is. We teach them what an end of game, what a, what a, a, a backed up, what a four point play is. We teach them all these football uh, uh, IQ things that make them better players on the field. And when we can show them film from last year, or our divisional opponents, that's what we use. I use a little bit of NFL film. Um, but I would say Tuesday, Thursday is going to be a huge emphasis on, on fundamentals and drills, right? Um, and I don't want them to get them good at a, 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 a drill. I want them to get good at a fundamental, right? So that's going to be a huge emphasis on Tuesday and Thursday. That's the area that I'm going to let you guys come in and watch from a social distance um, uh, to come in and watch that part of it. You'll see that working out. Um, there'll be very little team periods. I think we'll have... Out of 24 periods, I believe only six of them are team periods. The other 18 uh, uh, um, are, are, are pretty intense uh, um, fundamental work. And, you know, from the outside, it appears that you've been recruiting to your schemes. I mean, you added, you added running backs, you added linebackers. Uh, do, do you feel like you, you're working toward having the personnel that you need to, to do the things that you want to do? I'm very excited about what we did in our recruiting department. Um, uh, Pat Embert has been absolutely awesome. I've now added Jay Kaiser. Who handles our college personnel? Um, uh, hired some other people. Uh, Nate has been able to join us now in the high school world. We're uh, um, very close to adding another former alumni uh, that'll help us in the recruiting world here pretty quick. Um, and then we'll probably just have one other position to go. We've added some people in the graphics uh, department and, and looking to add some people there in the video. And and that's probably been the most enjoyable part for me. I love football. I love coaching. But to see this new group of people working. Uh, not only just on the, we've been working on this 2021 class still, you know what I mean? Because I specifically kept scholarships back because you know there's some players that are going to pop up in this state uh, or in other way, we also found one in Florida, right? So like there's some, uh, there's some great assets to being patient. Uh, you don't have to spend all your money at one spot. I used to tell, uh, um, um, you know, different people just because you got 20 bucks, I mean, you got to spend it. Same thing in recruiting, you know, just because you have 20 scholarships doesn't mean you got to give them all away. You know, find the right ones for you. So we're building that, but the really the 2022 class that we're working on now, um, building relationships with them. And we've had a couple of kids, even though they can't come on your campus and come in your building, they've been able to come to campus. We've had a number of guys the last several weeks to our campus. I, you know, my office up there, it's all glass, you know, and I can literally see a prospect down on the sidewalk walking and I can talk to him on the phone. I'm like the boy in the bubble. I'm like waving at him, but I can't, can't see him. So it's, it's a, it's a different time in recruiting, but it's a, it's a, it's one that we're trying to take advantage of and maximize. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Hey, Brett, how excited was Caleb Griffin when you guys um, added that wide receiver listing to him? So Caleb was one of the first guys to ever meet me in the hallway. He came up here and um, uh, his, his grandparents and my grandparents are in the same town. And so there's some personal connections and some things there. And then, you know, I, I, you know, when you meet a specialist, you think, you know, I mean, I get it. Kickers are people too, but they're specialists, right? They're not. They're not the, the normal football players everybody think about. So um, he, I had this visual of Caleb right from the get-go. And then when we started doing these workouts, like my man is just like, 
he does every drill like with no effort no it's just he's flying through he's beaten he's the one that went head to head of deuce and we'll just say that the uh the victory margin was very lopsided and it wasn't in Deuce's favor. Right. So, I mean, like you, you, you gotta like, and, and like I started watching all these drills and he would just, everybody else is sweating hands over their head, mouth breathing, trying to get air in their lungs. And, and Caleb's kind of like, you know, just walking around, like he's handling it. And so George McDonald came over and uh, I, I, I made a comment about how Caleb handles all things physically better than anybody else. And uh, George came over and he goes, Hey, can I take him into wide receiver drills today? And I said, let me go ask. And so we went up him and, and uh, I said, Caleb, would you like to do this? And I go, just let, let, let's see how it goes. So it went well. And then I brought him in and I just said, hey, I want you to have full competition. And, you know, you, you, there's no jobs that are guaranteed to anybody right now. We've obviously had a, a kicker and a punter that have accomplished a lot here. But I said, I'm going to let you, you know, compete for the starting kicking job. But if you want to, I would also love to have you see what you can do at wide receiver, right? If, if you can help us, I'd much rather have you stand out on the field and work than have you stand next to me on the sidelines and, and, and take stats, right? So, like, um, we'll see where it goes. Um, uh, uh, he was actually just in my office a little bit ago. We worked out a plan for where we'll be Tuesday, where he'll work with the kickers and when he'll work with the wideouts, and uh, we'll see where it goes. And then uh, I saw you shifted a bunch of guys over to outside linebacker um what went into that decision is it you know thinking of what your scheme is going to be going forward yeah I think that one of the things that we took with the defensive line in general DEs and D tackles is we kind of took a group of people that we think will be more of outside edge guys on their feet more of outside linebackers type guys and and don't right away everybody jumps oh three four it's not it's just you know it's it's a four two concept but the two outside guys might be standing up they might be down a three point depending on the call uh, we could also play, you know, a three, four scheme with some of those uh, uh, outside linebackers being actually defensive ends a little bit. So I think it just fits their mold a little bit. Coach kane has been doing a great job with them. It's the position I coached uh, uh, last year with the Giants, feel very comfortable with it. Um, have, uh, uh, you know, been showing them some clips of guys that I think they play similar to and how it can benefit them and help them. Bottom line is if you're an outside backer and you're on your feet, you just see things a lot better. You see things, jet motion, sweeps, alignments, uh, tight splits, wide splits, depth, depth of a back, all the things that you really can't see when you go down to a three point. So the more you can see here and communicate, the better you'll play. Thanks coach. Yep. Fred, if I could ducktail off that, just how excited have you been about the embracement of these super seniors to maybe asking them to do something different and the excitement that they feel in that and, and the energy that they feel in that, because it can be scary for them to, when you ask them to do something different, but they seem to have embraced it and, and want to want to embrace the the idea of putting more tools in their toolbox. It's a great, um, you, you know, the the world of football is spoken usually in English, right? Like we all played college football, we covered it, everybody speaks English, but in every program that I've ever been, whether a player or a coach, the words and the verbs mean different things. Like, you know, I, I know the in one system I was in, the word rose meant we we're going to run a bootleg to the right, right? Uh, if we said Lily, we run a bootleg to the left because they use flowers to tell you it's a bootleg. <whistles> Big deal, right? But when you're talking to Joe Schmo in, a, in the grocery store, right? If you pointed at a rose, he's going to know what a rose is. And you're not going to be thinking of a bootleg right, but that's where I, my mind went. So like communication is unique and different to the, to the uh, program that you're in. So I told these guys, hey, we may call this something different, but it's really this. And, and with the outside linebackers in general, I just said, hey, you're still, you're still a defensive end. You think you've been a D end your whole life? You're still a defensive end, but you have a little bit of a linebacker feature to you, you know. Um, same thing with our safeties, our, our, our corners. Um, we're calling everybody a DB because we don't know right now where everybody's going to fit in. We want our best players in the best position. So uh, words are awesome. I love words. I love communication. I'll give you an assignment, Matt. All right, next time you can tell me where the where the term ducktail comes from and why it's used in that term, all right? Uh, you, can, you can Google that one up, but it's, uh, it's very unique when you find it out. And you also mentioned about trying to get Brandon to talk more. I think everybody who's met Brandon has come to that conclusion. Uh, what What are you excited about about being able to see him for 15 practices and maybe have him take on a leadership role as, as he tries to, to win the quarterback job here this spring? Well, you know, everybody has strengths, everybody has weaknesses. Um, and, and his strengths are he's obviously a big body. He's very athletic. You can see that in our drills. Um, you know, you can see off film. I haven't been able to work with him while he's throwing, but he's he definitely has an arm, um, but his skill set is his skill set. The things he needs to do, right? 
has he played his best football? No. All right. Well, how do you play your best football? Part of that is he's got to communicate with his teammates better in a louder fashion. Uh, Isaiah on the flip side, he's got a lot of great skills and tools. All right. But his, his weaknesses are the things he needs to work on. So both quarterbacks, but both of them are completely different set of skill sets, which we'll work through. We'll manage it. We'll be fine. But they both have to recognize what those weaknesses are. Um, and uh, I think that quarterback position group in general, uh, I'm excited to see them get out there and see where they'll work and see how they'll go through things. Thanks, Brent. I'll have that yep. for you next time. All right. So we've got time for three or four more questions. I see some uh, follow-ups. We'll try to get through those. We've got about six or seven minutes. So go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Kent. Uh, Brett, just a quick follow-up. Um, Governor Pritzker announced literally within the last two hours that uh, that people ages 16 and up can get a, a vaccine starting April 12th. How do you think that might impact your team going forward in the spring or summer seasons? Yeah, I think it's obviously huge. You know, I've been vaccinated. Uh, most of my coaches have all been. Um, but obviously the ones we're concerned the most about are our are, are, are players. Um, and not just that, the people that they're around, right? Young people hang around young people. Uh, that's the way the world works. So um, I, I think anything that, that really overrides anything that I say or do in this building, we're always just worried about the safety of the people in this room and this building, um, you know, and, and we've seen it, you know, on a big, big scale. We've seen it on a small scale here at the University of Illinois, but also college, we're all part of college athletics. So one of the most, you know, pressing issues is when do we open up this dead period for us in recruiting? Because for my entire time here, you know, they haven't been able to be on our campus, see our coaches meet our, we've, we're Zoom and we're, we're like Zoom, Zoom freaks, right? We, we, we have three or four a day and we talk, set them up with their parents and we got six people on a Zoom call all around one young man, but they could be in six different states. So there's been parts that have been good that have taught us we can do that, but we need to see them face to face. That's what the parents, they want to see, feel and touch what we're all about. Um, so if that gives us a better chance to, you know, uh, open up the doors in recruiting, but then also some of the protocols that we got to deal with our students right now every day. You know, um, I give them a lot of credit. These guys, you know, we we start uh, uh, spit testing or COVID testing. They spit at 530 in the morning every day and they got to get that in uh, before our lift at six. And we have not had any issues. Our guys have been so conscientious and uh, just just amazing me the maturity they've shown towards that. So if they can get our, our current roster vaccinated and the students here on campus vaccinated, I think the world well, we'll be a little bit more back to normal, hopefully in the fall. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. Hey, Brett, I wanted to quickly follow up on this football 101 that you do. I've heard you talk about it before. What, what's the origin of that? And how do you feel like that creates a one-to-one -one connection with the players? Well, um, it probably goes back to, uh, um, I guess, I did a little bit at Wisco, um, but really a lot at Arkansas and then, then in the NFL, one of the first things I, I did when uh, when I went to work with the Patriots is I uh, would try to build myself into that uh, hallway and into that coaching staff. I would meet with all the incoming rookies, offense and defense, just about football knowledge, football IQ, football. And I, I kind of turned that in when I came here. You know, every every course on campus is 608, 403, 10. So I just, you know, I'm very entry level here, 101. I'm not claiming to give any master's degrees, but um, right when I say it, when I say football one-on-one, -on -one, you'll literally see every kid in our team meeting, he leans forward, grabs a notebook and just sits there. And there's a reaction to it that I get excited about because I know I'm spitting some knowledge into them and, and they're, I, 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 I keep it very specific for one lesson. Like we don't talk about 16 different things. We, we focus in on one thing and teach them, you know, how the game is really, most of the time games are lost than one. Like I say that all the time to them, more games are lost than one. And I, I would show them, especially early on, games that they either won last year or, or didn't. Like, uh, you guys all know how the end of the Rutgers game came out, right? It was a, a game-winning field goal, but that was really set up by several red area possessions that made that situation possible. So they got down to a field goal rather than a touchdown needed, you know? So there was, I teach them how the game might have 80 plays, offense and defense, but it's really getting down to how these five to 10 plays are managed during the course of the game. Sometimes they happen in the first quarter. Sometimes they happen in the fourth quarter, but they all matter. Thank you. Yep. And hey, we'll wrap up today with uh, Jeremy. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hey, Brett, I just want to follow up on your defense. I, I think all of us want to label what, what you're going to run, but is that a foolhardy exercise these days? Because it seems like everybody is so multiple. I, I, I do. I understand why everybody loves the label, right? Everybody loves the label. We're all consensus takers, right? We, we want to... Uh, 
you know, put everybody into a slot where, where if we just all be ourselves, we'd be a better place. Right. So same thing in football. Um, I've been so impressed with, with Ryan, you know, I have three defense. I have Ryan's our defense coordinator. He's calling the shots, but you know, Andy Boo's been a defensive coordinator. Kevin Kane's been a defense coordinator. And then the two guys that haven't been were two guys that have played in my system as players, you know, Aaron and, and uh, J-Mo. Um, and then Kay Rich is one of our, our graduate assistants. So to have all these guys kind of tie together into certain things has been fun to watch. And all we're trying to do is find out what our best players to play in the best positions to give us the best chance to win. Um, and whether that's going to be a, a four down front, a three down front, a two down front um, with two on the edges, it's kind of a work in progress. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, Ryan is a very impressive uh, uh, a guy. He's been a defense quarter now, I believe six years in total, but he's done it in a couple different schematical settings. Um, so I think the guys are really buying into what he spits. Um, uh, he might let you in on a little insight. I thought he's done a great job of creating a label and a tag with our defense that that is kind of uh, encompassing the history of Illinois football, but also letting them have an identity of what they are right now, and they get to write that identity. So um, there's some fun things happening within the building for sure. Thanks, Brett. Thank you. All right, Coach. 45 minutes. We appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for uh, talking with everybody. Appreciate it. You guys have a one. Be safe. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everyone.